I do apologize for the interruptions. Um, I have just cleared my phone. If you are new now, please go to part one and part two. Kintat's meteoric dagger, as it's been called in several scientific outlets, as I have stated. There's no evidence it's meteoric. Of course. So I encourage you if you have some boys and you are in a group that promotes certain exciting uh, mysteries, you might just decide to post the actual study if you find it. Because the reason we are in this mess is that people don't speak up. Irish negative people don't speak up. And actually that's cool. But if you support something idiotic with your presence, then you are part of the problem. Anyways, uh, I don't have commenting anymore on my blog, on my, on my, on my uh, YouTube channel, because the commenting section has become just a cesspool of, um, you know, it's, it's drawing the wrong people. And Egypt, when it comes to ancient Egypt, I can tell you guys, I have been staying away from the subject for a long time for very good reason, or for very good reasons. And the reason is, of course, that so much about the subject matter is now about, um, it's political, it's ideological, it's mystery and theory based and agenda driven. So ancient Egypt, I'm going to limit myself to what I know and what I don't know. But I will pick here and there some claims and then go for them and examine them through the eyes of actual science. And it doesn't mean that I say I know everything or I know anything. Maybe I don't know anything. But there are certain things you can look up even if you do not know a thing. You can look it up and then you can decide for yourself how much of a theory you want to build upon the knowledge that you have. So, no, there's no evidence it's meteoric. Of course not. And I know some of you already probably turned off and said, oh, I don't want to hear this. It sounds so cool and you're so negative and you're like, oh my God, you're like, you know, every time something exciting comes my way, you're like, it's not really true or, you know, so I know I'm used to this stuff. So this is the first thing that I had to bring up. The second part I'm going to bring up right now with you guys is this. Um, until 6th century BC, these kinds of tools were not created in Egypt. When did King Tut live? Yes. Look it up. Where did the dagger come from? Now, A2 is his blood type. And Assyrians, for example, have a high percentage of blood type A2. R1B is his Y DNA, high among the Yamnaya people. If you're up for it, you can go to. Uh, well, either my blog or Eopedia, and you can look up the information, or not even information, but the hint I've been given in one of the discussions, to look up the Hittite, Kurdian, Kurgan, uh, Yamnaya artifacts, the old uh, daggers. I forgot the exact number, 5,000 plus years ago, or 5,000 plus years BC, long before the Egyptians in that region the people already had these kinds of daggers. R1B, highly dominant in this region. Where did King Tut's ancestry come from? What do you think? These people went through India, maybe, to get... Who knows? I actually don't know. I have to look it up more. Or maybe you can help me look it up. So, of course, if they didn't, if they did this more than 5,000 years ago, they have done it ever since. It doesn't mean that this has been in the possession of his family for thousands of years. It could have been hundreds of years, or thousands, or thousands, yes, sure. But wouldn't it make the most sense that, um, since we don't know if any of the neighboring countries of Egypt already had this technology, 
not to assume that somebody came from far away and brought this as a gift. Wouldn't it be make more sense that at one point the ancestors of King Tut came towards that region, now Egypt, and brought all of these things with them? They had to have weapons, right? They were going on a long journey. They didn't know what to expect. So, did they go empty-handed? They had to also hunt. They had to take care of business. They had to feed their families or they, themselves, at least, if the families didn't come with them. And this haplogroup, his empty DNA is K for what it's worth. It's now most frequent among uh, Ashkenazi Jews. So Ju Sumerian ancestry, I'm not sure. I wish that we had more information. But the dagger story, hey, it got your attention, right? But guess what? Maybe reality is more exciting than fantasy. How about we first get to the root of reality before we drown ourselves in a fantasy just to be a placeholder for things we have been misled on? Right? You agree? Or do you trust every publication based on their reputation without examination? And that's sensational uh, the sun. But I'm pretty sure half of you will say, thank you for telling me. Of course, I figured already. I like the man. There's more information on my website, which is negative.net. And I strongly encourage you to do your own research, to verify anything I'm stating and writing, or bring it to my attention if there's anything that is not 100% correct.